Hey, this is Paul from Online Tax Academy. And in this week's lesson, we've got a bit of a Christmas theme challenge where you're going to be able to learn all your scales and all your arpeggios whilst playing the song Jingle Bells. All right, let's get started. <laughs> So last week we learned how to transpose a melody into a different scale by using the same scale degrees. So the example we used last time was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, where we took the first phrase, which is 1155665, and then you can choose another scale, give it its scale degrees. So for example, here was F major with its scale degrees. And then we plug in those same numbers, 1155665, and we get the same melody, but now in a different key. What we're going to do this week is introduce the idea of the circle of fifths. Now, the circle of fifths is a way to organise all 12 keys so that at the top, at 12 o'clock, C major has no sharps or flats. It's all plain letter names, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Now, each step clockwise, we're adding one sharp. So G major, which has one sharp, F sharp. Then at two o'clock, we have D major, which has two sharps. And at three o'clock, A major, three sharps, etc. Now, the reason why it's called the cycle of fifths is because the distance between each of those keys, so from C to G, and then from G to D, they're all perfect fifths. As you go around anti-clockwise, we're adding one flat. So one step away from C anti-clockwise is one flat, two steps away, two flats, etc. And here you're stepping down a perfect fifth each time. So in the description, there's a link where you can get a PDF of all your major scales with the scale degrees written above. And the challenge is this week, we're gonna take the main theme of Jingle Bells, which just uses the first five notes of a major scale, and we're gonna plug in the numbers and gradually make our way round the cycle of fifths. Now we're going to start it in C major on the alto. It starts with 3-3-3-3-3-3. Three, 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 three. So our first phrase on alto would sound like this. Okay, the next phrase goes 3-5-1-2-3. Three, so now we're gonna take those first two phrases and move them around the cycle. And we're actually gonna go anti-clockwise around the cycle and it will sound something like this. So this has the added benefit of being quite a workout for your lips as well, because you're playing for quite a long time. Okay, so some tips whilst you're doing this are to really focus on the numbers you're playing and connecting them to the note names of the particular scale. So as I'm playing three, five, one, two, three, if I'm say in B flat major, I'm really thinking three, three, three as I play D, D, D. The other thing is I played it quite fast just to save time. You should go as slow as you need to and spend as much time in one key as you need to, to feel really comfortable connecting the scale degrees with the individual notes. Again, I was also only doing those first two phrases. You can try playing the whole song and then shifting to the new key as well. What this will start to do is really illuminate each key so that you know exactly which scale degree is in each scale. And that's when you really know a scale. So for example, because this tune starts with 3-3-3, three, 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 you're gonna really quickly get to know the third note, the third scale degree of each key. And the third is a really important note, particularly when you're improvising. It's one of those notes that gives the chord its color, whether it's major or minor. And all of these are major thirds. So what you're doing here is actually learning your major triads as well. Because for example, that phrase three, five, one, two, three, you start with a three, five, one. Well, your one, three, five, that's a major triad or a major chord. 
Now, of course, you don't have to just do this <laughs> with the song Jingle Bells. You can do this with any tune, any fragment of a tune, or if you're studying jazz in a bit more depth and you're starting to learn little pieces of language here and there, you can then start to cycle these pieces of language into all the keys. And this just gives you so much more flexibility so that when you're improvising, you're not just limited to playing that little phrase in one particular key. You've got it at your disposal, no matter what key you're in. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe as I release a new lesson every week. Let me know in the comments how you got on. And don't forget, if you would like a PDF with all your major scales written out with the scale degrees over the top and the scale degree numbers for the tune of Jingle Bells, that's all linked as a PDF down in the description below. All right, I'll see you next week.